Power Analysis Warm-Up. This encryption algorithm leaks a bit of data every time it does a computation. We use this to figure out the encryption key. So they've given us the encryption program, and we can access the running server with a particular netcat command. So if we say netcat, Saturn Pico CTF dot net seven eight three. It's going to say sixteen bytes of plain text encoded at hex. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, thirty, one, two. All right, so that says it leaked 10 whatever. So if we look here, what we see is when we take a data byte, an exclusive or it with a key byte, and put it into the ASS box, it will append to the leak buffer whether the last bit of that is a 1. And then we're going to get a count of how many 1s there were. So we're going to take our 16 data bytes, exclusive or them with the 16 key bytes, run them through the S box and we get to know a count from zero through 16 of how many of those were odd numbers. So that is what we get. And then our key is going to be Pico CTF with those, the encryption key in, in hexadecimal. And the encryption algorithm is simple. The correlation between the leakage and the key can be very easily modeled. So I'm going to do that here in my power warm Python. So I've copied that S box from their code. And now here I have something that's going to send a plain text. So we're going to connect. We'll get that prompt. We'll send our plain text. We'll get the response. And we'll get back how many of those bytes were odd. So from 0 to 16. So once I have done that, which I do down here, I basically, for each of the 16 byte positions, I loop trying every possible byte in that position and seeing how many of them are odd. The minimum of that, so like changing only one byte position can only change that value by one. So it might be like 12 and 13 or something of that form. So I subtract the minimum, so I now have an array of zeros and ones with 16. Um, we're going to do that 16 times. Each of these arrays will be 256 long, corresponding to the 256 possible values that we could pass in. So then we loop over the keys and ask, is it a good key? And we pass it that array of zeros and ones. And so for that, we just say, all right, for each of the i's, we're going to put that i exclusive ord with the key and run that through the S box, see if it's odd. And if it's odd and I think it should be even or vice versa, then this was not the key. So presumably there's only one key byte that can match in all 256 places in that array. So we loop over the 256 possible keys. If it's good, we include it. And then we print out these, these key bytes. So I'm going to get back from this program, 16 integers. I just need to convert those integers to hexadecimal and throw them all together. And I'll go ahead and put this program in the comments. You'll need to change this port to whatever port you're running on. So in our example here, uh, we're at port 50783. So I'll change this to 50783. And so it's going to connect 256 times. And again, each time it's connecting, it's changed the first byte to one of 256 values, and it's computing how many bits of leak there are. And so from that, we'll get 256 numbers, that will all differ by at most one. And we take the minimum of that, subtract, we'll get an array of zeros and ones. 
And then from that, once we've gotten through 256, it should give us one byte of the key. Now let's see if it's, there, there it did. It gave us, so the first byte of the key there, you'll see is 116. Now, it turns out that you may end up, because there's a, a time limit on the Docker instance, the program may not finish. And so what I ended up doing was just taking the um, loop that loops over the byte positions, and I'll just go ahead and kill that. So this loop that loops over the byte positions, the first time I ran it, I got zero through nine. So I just did range 10 to 16, and I got the rest of the bytes that way. So like I said, you'll have um, an array of 16 integers. So you'll have something that looks like this, you know, 112. We'll just, you know, put in some numbers. There'll be 16 of them. And then you can convert all of those to hex by just saying print them in hex. All right, so that 70 is 112 and so forth. And then you can catenate them. If it's, you get a one digit thing, you have to put a zero in front so that you get the right number of digits. When you do all that, you will you will have the flag. And again, the key principle here was that we were getting the number of SBOX substitutions that were odd. And so by simply guessing each byte of the key, we could figure out um, if it matched the right pattern for SBOX substitutions and then get the flag.